Welcome to Oracle tutorial. Uh, so we are discussing about PLSQL for the last few videos and uh, today also we'll take uh, another PLSQL topic uh, which is conditional statements. Now most of you are familiar who have done some uh, sort of programming in any language uh, of this uh, language construct if then else. Uh, so PLSQL also being a procedural language also supports uh, such conditional statements. So I will go over quickly uh, with this uh, in a few examples. Uh, there is not much to explain really. Um, so if then else, uh, so the syntax is if then um, and then if you have, I can, either you can do else and then you can end it with end if or you can do else if. Now the key thing is the it's ELS IF without any space and uh, and then if you want uh, combined condition you can join them with and and the other thing is a little different than other languages the language is it has always a then. So here you know just if you see the example I am putting the salary into a variable and I am comparing the L salary which is a variable with uh, different numbers and I'm printing so if you run the program uh, let's see so we are running it for we're running it uh, let's see we are selecting the salary for employee 2 and let's query the table to see what employee 2 has so employee 2 has 95 salary so which probably would be here. So we should get the commission of 10% uh, which of 95 is around $9.05. So this is a simple procedure, uh, PLSQL block to show you if then else. What I'm doing is that I'm uh, fetching salary and then based on the salary amount uh, I'm calculating commission and I'm printing that commission. So EMP owner has salary 95 and commission 9.5 which is the right one which is this one and it is calculating 10% of salary. So that's all about if then else and then now we will discuss something about cursors which are um, a little bit more uh, involved topic. So now we are going to discuss about cursors. Now what are cursors? Uh, now, if you have programmed in other languages, you probably have a uh, program where you define an array and then you have a set of elements and which you, uh, you know, uh, do array processing or uh, something of that nature. Now, in a, in a database context, that is called, uh, you know, we store records in tables and then we fetch it and, uh, and work on it. So, cursor is... Uh, uh, feature provided by PLSQL which allows you to uh, which helps you to uh, process records in a more efficient way or or it's a gives you a tool to work with uh, you know set of records so so it really cursor is essentially a, a work area created in the memory uh, when a SQL statement is executed so think about like uh, you know you 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 are fetching certain employee records and you have to store it and so that you can uh, you can work each record at a time. So so cursor provides some sort of a temporary work area where you can store it. Along with that, it also gives certain features, um, you know, like a function, so that you can get, uh, let's say, a, a count of uh, records in the in the in the storage, or you know, if there is at all any record, and you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so so this temporary work area is used to store, uh, as I said to data retrieve from the database and manipulate this data. Now a cursor can hold more than one row or you know or, or if you define it it may not have any row because your query didn't return any row but so it can contain more than one row but you can process only one row at a time. So that that's sort of an a, a concept to understand is that you put all the rows in a, in a temporary work area and then you open the cursor and then you process one row at a time and the the set of rows the cursor holds is called the active set now there are two types of cursors one is uh, implicit cursor 
another is explicit cursor the implicit cursors are when you write your insert update or delete statement uh, they are automatically created by the system so for example uh, if we write a typical select statement let's say um, let me choose a digital so as I was saying uh, there are implicit cursor and explicit cursors so implicit cursor is defined by system whenever you write a select statement so here we have a select salary from EMP so let's say this is our query now when you fire that query Oracle defines a cursor by itself uh, and you can use the attributes of the cursor uh, if you need so for example a cursor attribute is it allows it tells you how many rows are there in that so how many rows are in that cursor so you can use that attribute to find out how many how many uh, uh, queries uh, or how many records in your uh, in your uh, cursor Whereas the explicit cursors are you define yourself. So, for example, you define a cursor, you write a command like cursor is, and then you do select. So, that's uh, implicit, uh, sorry, that's an explicit cursor. And typically, you do explicit cursor when you, 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 you want to process one record at a time and uh, and then you need to define a cursor whereas explicit implicit cursors it's you know when you don't do the bulk processing and then uh, you just write some select or write some update when you really are not interested in do record level processing anyway we'll go over uh, once we do some uh, programming we will uh, we'll see, take some examples through some uh, PLSQL programs things would be a little bit more clear to you let's take an example of uh, implicit cursor as you uh, see here, to fire the insert, update, or delete DML statement or select, then as I said, the implicit cursor gets defined. And then you can use some of the implicit cursor attributes uh, for, um, you know, for your advantage, sort of. It gives you some, you can think some uh, tools or functions uh, which you can help if you want to necessarily find something what your uh, DML statements did. So DML, by the way, DML statements, if you're confused, what does it mean, DML? DML stands for Data Manipulation Language. So delete, insert, update, and select. These are called DML. And then there is another term called DDL, Data Definition Language. And that is used mostly to create table or drop table or create procedure and, and that sort of thing. So when you're doing something with the data, it is you are involving DML. But when you are creating objects like tables or procedures or views, you say DDL. Now coming back to uh, our implicit cursor, as you see here, we have we have got an update statement where uh, salary equal to uh, it's increasing the salary by 100 when the ID greater than 10. So when you run that update statement, Oracle defines the implicit cursor. An implicit cursor has certain attributes called percent not found, percent found, and percent row count. So what are really those are, after firing this, if you access that attribute, it will tell you, um, it will tell you some details about what is the, what your statement has done. So for example, after firing this, if you say if SQL percent not found, so it will have uh, the value uh, zero if, uh, or it will have the value um, true if there is no record got updated and the same thing for the person found will have true if something got uh, found so for a, for a select statement if uh, if you do like a select into uh, where id equals to six if that doesn't fetch any row then you'll have a not found if you do an update and if your id doesn't id greater than 10 uh, if there is no row return then it will get not found in the same way person row count it will give you uh, how many rows got updated so let's fire this. Now in this particular case, as you see, we have no record with ID greater than 10. So if you, if you fire, if you see, uh, this is our EMP table with three rows and we don't have any record with ID greater than 10. So now if we fire this um, PLSQL block, as you see, none of the salaries were updated. Means it was here because 
this particular update DML statement did not get it did not update anything so you got SQL person not found is true so whereas if you do do this so then we'll have probably two rows um, so we'll see salaries for two employees are updated so that's about the DML statements uh, next we'll uh, do the explicit cursor thank you